what is going on guys, it's Modern Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how you can take your disc games, so PS4 games that you have on disc, and basically back them up to a package file format so that you can run them without the disc, uh, just straight from the hard drive. So basically the same thing we did when we kind of downloaded uh, games from PSX hacks that had that were in package file format and we installed them like Dying Light and PT and we got them running with the homebrew enabler without any discs. That is essentially what we're doing. We're taking the disc version of the game and basically turning it into the kind of like PS Store, PlayStation Store version of the game which you can run without the disc. That is essentially what we're doing. So in order to do this, there's actually a couple of ways you can do this. There's a few different programs. I'm just going to use PS4 AIO, but there's other programs as well. Um, so, you know, you decide which one's the least complicated, but there's a couple of different methods of doing this. So first of all, uh, we'll move over to the PC here. Uh, actually, before that, we'll go ahead and load up the internet browser and head to our exploit page. And if you don't have this set up, you don't have this page, please watch my full jailbreak tutorial on 4.05. Uh, it's a full tutorial on how to set this up, get this page working, get on the internet browser when you're not on PSN. All that stuff is covered. Now, what we're going to be using is we're going to use either IDC or Spectre for this. Technically, if you have these like X4Text-Dumper or FTP, uh, you can actually use that instead because that's essentially what we're going to be injecting through IDC or Spectre. Um, but, you know, just for the sake of consistency, we're going to just use uh, IDC or Spectre. So I'm going to use IDC because it is um, just loads a bit faster. So there we go. You click IDC, should load about halfway, be stuck on a white screen. That means it's uh, working and it's waiting for payload. So at that point, we're going to switch over to the PC here. And we're going to open up uh, PS4 AIO. And what you want to do is enter your IP address of your PS4 in the bottom left hand corner. So for me that is 192.168.137.240. Uh, that's my IP of my PS4. You want to make sure 4.05 is selected at the top right here. And then you want to select Game Dumper from the Payloads option. And you don't have to enter a game ID for 4.05, it will detect it automatically. Uh, now you can either dump to the PC directly, which is done over FTP, or you can dump to the USB. So that's up to you. Uh, personally, I would say do it to the USB because um, it's a bit more reliable, a bit more stable. Um, but you can do it with PC as well, I'll show you both in this video. So to begin with, we're going to do USB. So what you want is a USB stick plugged into the PS4. Make sure the USB stick is in XFAT format, EXFAT. So if it's not, you just plug it into your PC, right click and format it to XFAT. Um, that's the format it needs to be in. Um, you, can, you can have other files on the USB, it doesn't matter. As long as the USB is uh, big enough to, to hold the game. The game, you know, PS4 games are pretty big. Uh, so just make sure your USB stick has enough storage space. Uh, then what you want to do is just plug the USB into the PS4. And once the USB stick is plugged into the PS4, what we can do is we can inject this payload. Uh, so we just click inject. It says done, payload injected. Start your game and leave it at the main menu. This may take a long time if the game is large. The console will shut down once dumping has completed. Uh, or as completed because I made a typo there. Shit, didn't realize that. Oh well, uh, it happens. Anyway, so basically just do that. So back over to the PS4 here. So it says minimize this and basically start the game. And now that we've started the game, it will now be dumping that to the USB. And uh, you don't need a progress bar or anything. You'll know when it's done because the console will turn off. So as long as the console is still switched on and you're on the game, then it's still dumping. And then as soon as the console turns off, you know it's finished. Uh, so that's all you have to do there. Um, again, depending on the size of the game, if the game's very big, like 40, 60 gigs, this could take a fair amount of time uh, to do. So yeah, just be patient, wait for the console to switch off and that's it done. Make sure you don't have... Um, sleep mode enabled on the PS4 so that will like automatically switch off or automatically go into sleep mode after a certain amount of time. Make sure that's turned off 
because uh, that can screw with this. Uh, you you only want it to switch off once the dumping is completed. So when you get to like the the menu like here or just before the menu where it says press X to start, just just don't touch anything. Just leave it here and let it switch off once the dumping's finished. Okay, guys. So once the dumping has finished, you'll see you'll have a folder in here with the game ID and all the game files will be inside this folder. You'll also have another file underneath that's got the game ID and it should say something like underscore completed or, un or dash completed uh, to show that it has finished. If it's not finished, it'll still say dash dumping, um, which means it's not finished and you pulled the USB stick out too early. All right, so what you wanna do then is just, you can either keep it on the USB or drag it somewhere on your computer. So I've gone ahead and copied it over to my computer here. So you can see here, we've got this CUSA00016 and this was taken off the USB and it's got all the files. You can see the eboot.bin is decrypted. And if you go into SCE system, you should have stuff like the icon for the game showing up in here, um, little background. You might even have a trophy file in there if the game has trophies write.sprx, all that stuff should be in here and then you're good. So that's one way to do it. That's one way to get the game files copied over to your PC and decrypted. So the other method, like I said, was through FTP. So if I just go ahead and switch back over to the PS4 here, so let's just show you quickly how you would do this if you're gonna do it through FTP. So you would load the IDC exploit like this and then you would go to the game decryptor, you would select PC instead of USB, and then you would click inject payload. And then it would say, uh, select a save location to save the files to. So I'm just gonna select the desktop. And then it's gonna come up and it's gonna say, uh, load IDC exploit on PS4. The bar should load about halfway, which it is. And then click yes once you've done this to inject the payload. So I click yes, payload gets injected. Uh, and then press the PS button and start the game you want to dump. So press PS button, start Watch Dogs. And then it says, once in main menu, minimize the game, but don't close it. Click OK once you have done that. So I've just, we're on the intro right now, Ubisoft. Okay, so here we are. And then just press the PS button, but do not close the application. And then we can click OK. Now time to dump the game files. It says it may take a few hours depending on the size of the game. So if the game's really big, like a 40, 60 gigabyte game, it's gonna take a long time. So click okay, and there you go. It starts copying the files through FTP. It's already got them decrypted and it's just copying them from the console to the computer. So it's going into this folder, as you can see. Here's the, here's the folder of the game files, and it's just copying the first file over here windycity.dat, it's done about four megabytes. And then it should refresh eventually as it's copying. As you can see we're at 1% on that particular file. It is a big file, I think it's like over a gig. And then overall progress. So you can see even with a 20 gigabyte game, this way of transferring is a lot slower, but it gets it directly on the PC rather than having to copy it to a USB and then copy it from the USB to the computer, which also takes quite a bit of time. So, all right guys, so once we've got the game copied over, so I'm just gonna use the USB one because that completed fully. Uh, so once you've got the game copied over to your PC like this, you've got all the game files, you want to open up gengp4.exe. Now, PS4 AIO, if you're copying it over using the FTP method, it will automatically open this program for you once it's finished dumping the game. Uh, but if you're doing it through the USB method, you have to do it manually. So you open up Gen GP4. Okay, so it's gonna look a bit screwed up, unfortunately, uh, but that's uh, just because of DPI scaling on Windows 10. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to click the little folder icon and you wanna search for CUSA and then, you know, the game basically, the game folder. Okay, so I've selected the game folder on my desktop. And then you just wanna click generate GP4. And that'll do all of this. Done, and then once it's done, you click save GP4, and then just save it somewhere like your desktop. 
and close out of that and then you'll have this little GP4 file on your desktop. Now you can find these programs inside PS4 AIO's install directory by the way if you just right click PS4 AIO and then open file location it's inside the tools folder and then you've got uh, gen GP4 which is that same program right there and orbis-pubgen so that's the next one we want to run orbis-pubgen.exe and with this one, what you want to do is just do file open and we're going to be opening this GP4 file that we just saved. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and open it. And then you can literally just click build now, uh, but just to test to make sure all the files copied, if you double click image zero, then you should see all your files in here. If you go to chunk, expand this, you should see all the files should be chunk zero and all the folders. Okay, and that's not the case. Not all the files are supposed to be chunk zero, but you can see the images, uh, all the files have been added. So we know that that's good. So we can close out of that now. Okay, so all you have to do is click build and this will build the package file and you just select again an output path. So again, I'm just gonna select my desktop as my output path to save the package file to. And then we're just gonna click build and it's gonna start building our package file. Now this. Again, it's going to take some time because it's the it's a 20 gigabyte game. You may have a much larger game you're doing this with. It takes quite a bit of time to actually compile that into a package file. And then also, you need to be aware of any errors. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, we've got like warnings popping up. Warnings are okay. There's nothing wrong with warnings. Uh, warnings are normal. Uh, what you don't want is errors. So if you get an error, then that's a problem. Now sometimes you get an error when you first build uh, saying something about uh, diskmap.plt or something like that. If you get that error just click build a second time it should fix itself but any other errors uh, then something's gone wrong like I don't know maybe the maybe the game didn't dump fully maybe it didn't decrypt all the files you know so if everything goes well here then we should be good. Okay, so basically this is now finished. As you can see, create image process finished with warnings. Warnings are normal. As long as you don't get errors, you're good. So we're gonna go ahead and close this now. Close out of this. And we now have our package file uh, of the game, which is basically 20 gigabytes, which is pretty much correct. That is the size of the game. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to put this on a USB, the same USB. So we'll just copy this package file over. Fortunately, I have a crappy USB 2 USB stick, so this is gonna take me some time. So I'll be back with you guys once it's at 100%. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, the game has copied over to the USB. Make sure it's on the root of the USB, not in any folders. And what you wanna do is just unplug the USB, plug it back into the PS4. Okay, so here we are back on the PS4. So what we're gonna do is head back onto our uh, exploit page okay so we head on to our exploit page and uh, this time we want to start the xvortex-hen payload um, now again if you don't have this page um, well that's gonna kind of suck but hey if you don't have the page then you can open up ps4 AIO again and just inject it using the payload injector so 192.168.1 37.240. That's my IP address for my PS4. And then from the drop down list, I would select PS4 Hen and I would just inject payload right here while while IDC is loaded, you know, while the bar is loaded halfway and the white screen and it's saying waiting for payload. Or, well, if, if you use Spectre, it'll say waiting for payload. If you use IDC, it'll just be a white screen. The bar will load halfway like I showed before and then you just click inject payload on PS4 AIO and that would send the payload. Um, but because I have uh, this one with xvortex-hen I'll just start this which will do the same thing uh, just without requiring me to inject it from the PC. So click OK once it's injected. That's homebrew now enabled and with homebrew enabled what we want to do is first of all remove the disk from the game and delete the game just get rid of the game delete it completely uh, because we're gonna install the package file version uh, so we're gonna go now to settings 
and we're going to scroll down to debug settings which will only appear if you've injected the ps4 hen payload then we go to game uh, package installer and there's watchdogs from the usb stick so we'll select it and once again we have to go through a long waiting game of installing this package file so once again i'll be back with you guys when it finishes there we go okay so that's it installed so if we go back we'll see that it should now be on here Du, du, du. There it is, Watchdogs, and there's no disk icon. It just says start, right? Because we have copied it from disk to hard drive. So the disk is not in. There is no disk in the tray. We'll start the game. Now, bear in mind, this game would not start if we didn't enable the homebrew enabler, if we didn't inject the homebrew enabler. But because we injected the homebrew enabler, it's going to allow us to run it. So it's basically behaving in the exact same way as any of the free games. And uh, another thing I didn't say at the beginning was this is how people are doing it. This is how people are posting free games on PSX hacks. They're taking a game they have on disk and then they're doing this to turn it into a package file which can run through the homebrew enabler and then they're just, you know, uh, profile is corrupt, will be overwritten. Okay, whatever. I had an old save on there, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, essentially that's it working. And yeah, so they'll take the package file and then they'll they'll post it on PSX hacks, they'll upload it, and then anyone can download that package file and get it running through the homebrew enabler, uh, as we've just done here. So there you go, guys. That is how you take a game you have on disk and convert it into a package file format so that you can send that to someone else so they can play it or so that you just have a backup of your game so that if anything happens to your disc you're good you have a backup that you can run so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this if you did go ahead and leave a like and subscribe and i will hopefully see you guys in the next video